Okay, and here we have Pariah. Pariah is my Carrick. Again, awesome ship, but again, it is not a ship I plan to fly in the verse, but I plan to have other people join me. So again, this is one of those things that kind of go with my plan for taking out my Banu Merchantman. I'll be using this Carrick as an early warning system. So the crew on this will kind of be hanging near my Banu Merchantman and letting me know if someone gets too close uh, or if someone's inbound that we didn't know about. Uh, this is the Code Red paint job for this thing, which is pretty hot. Uh, I won't take you on a full tour of this thing. I'll just kind of tell a couple of the quirks. One of my least favorite things about the Carrick, and it is a very, very short list. This is the only way in or out of the ship uh, when it's landed. Um, I have made a suggestion, as have others, that there should be at least one of the elevators always because this ramp is so slow always kind of watch until that bottom piece comes up because someone can easily run up this thing uh something's cool show you this <laughs> totally pointless but uh i mean i guess it keeps the a vehicle from blocking off the doorway but um just kind of a cool little thing uh you've got a little access tunnel through there most people every time i see people get on this ship i always see them run through here and keep going you've actually got an elevator straight to the bridge right here and this is the one that i'll be taking up uh these bays are going to be modular and in theory you'll be able to drop them down right now the only thing they do is hold cargo but eventually medical bays uh salvage bays research bays probably think about it get these little elevators that allow you to go down into them kind of pointless right now but eventually they'll be kind of cool Let that open up you got three of them and then you go into the actual ship itself and here's your elevator that most people take which again i'm not sure why you've got your uh suits can go up there you can see there's room enough for six of them you've got other stuff back there now if i were redesigning the ship right now i would have it that this elevator this main elevator could go all the way down and outside to kind of allow people to go in and out without having to open the big ramp i would also so again, this is the only entrance right now when you're on the ground. There is a docking ring that you can go out. Uh, you come in here, it even says elevator on it. You call this and there it is, comes down. It would be nice if they added one more level here and let this one go outside so that you could go outside with one or two people without venting the whole ship. Uh, so you can kind of see it goes up. So this is the main bridge here, and then that's the upper bridge up there. So let's go to the habitation deck, which is the main line of the bridge. That drops down. Now here you are. You've got your crew sort of amusement area there. You've got your um, cafeteria here. And then I believe that is the, is that the medical bay right here? Yeah, that's the medical bay. And then the next level up, you've got the hangar. Um, so come out here. And you got your main bridge. If we walk out here, and sort of see the upper bridge up there. And there's a seat right there that controls the turret on top of the ship remotely otherwise uh you sit down here and you can fly it 
Carrick is a great ship. It's the sort of king exploration ship. I wouldn't say the king science ship. Uh, that remains with the Misk um, Endeavor, which is not in the game yet. So again, as cool as this ship is, this is, this is a tight fit for this ship. Um, this is an org ship. So if you're a member of the carnival uh, and you got like, I would say probably the safe number to run this ship with is probably minimum five and I would say to be safe probably about nine would probably be ideal seven to nine people uh, because you definitely want a couple engineers um, the ship does have some pretty wicked acceleration for a big ship uh, flies pretty well but it's got four turrets so it's got the two on the wings there one on top one on bottom all four of them can shoot straight forward uh, and straight back. So it's got pretty good coverage. You can see the hangar right there on top. Uh, this is a great, great exploration ship. If you're going out into the deep dark, this is the ship to do it with. Um, eventually, you can't really see it, but right. Let's see if I can zoom in. You can sort of see the lines right there where it says 01L and 02L. Those are mappers for finding jump points or sort of tracking your way through jump points. Uh, at the moment, we have... It used to be that they said uh, you will be using this ship to find jump points. I think that has largely changed. And what you'll be doing is as you go through a jump point, this ship will actually be able to map the jump point uh, because you'll be able to break out early on the side paths and they'll drop you into specific areas of the next patch. So, or in the next uh, system. And the advantage to that, of course, will be that uh, people won't be able to lock down a system because if you go through the jump tunnel and you pop out early, you're gonna pop out in an area that isn't protected by that gate, but you wanna be able to map it so that other people can follow you. That is what this ship will do. And that is why I want this ship joining my BMM. You can sort of see she's not great at rolling, typically not this slow, so something else is going on right now. So another thing I wanna show is you can see that the spool up for the quantum drive is very, very slow. Uh, the base quantum drive that this ship comes with is extremely slow, but very efficient. So uh, you might want to switch it out for something faster because you won't go across the system as quickly. Uh, but when you do, um, it'll be a lot more efficient. You won't be burning as much, which doesn't matter so much in Stanton. It will start mattering in places like Pyro where fuel might not be as plentiful and you might need to be allied with certain groups in order to refuel there. A jump drive that sips fuel would probably be more advantageous. So there are a lot of things to like about this ship, not least of which is that when you are piloting it from either here or the other bridge station that's right over my head, uh, this has great visibility. You're basically hanging out. Eventually, one day, there'll be an armored shield that can come down like 
to here and there and there, and you'll basically have like this little spot looking out. Uh, they say that they still want to do that. Um, but who knows if they'll be able to pull it off. I mean, it seems like with everything else they've pulled off in this game, that would be a pretty easy one, but they haven't done it yet. Eventually they will. Uh, but it will have an armored cowl that will cover up all of this glass. So the Carrick has the distinction of being able to accelerate very quickly. Um, I'm not sure if that is going to be... I'm not sure if it's a feature or a bug. I'm not sure if that's something that will stand pat over time. Uh, I would be shocked if it is, but maybe. Uh, I mean, it's it's been a known feature of this ship for a few patches. I feel like uh, CIG would have nerfed that back quite a few patches ago if they didn't want it to be a feature, but I wouldn't count on that, that normally ships this big don't accelerate as quickly as the ship does. Uh, it has a very high top speed and it accelerates fast. So that is highly unusual. Uh, the only ship I think that out accelerates this one is the Mercury Star Runner. So, I mean, that that kind of gives you a sense for how quick this thing can get up to speed. Uh, but yeah, Carrick, king of the exploration ships. I plan on having this one, which is named Pariah, uh, joining me and escorting me across the verse. Um, again, I won't be in it, so I'll be handing it off to someone else to captain and crew up. Uh, again, just given the size of the ship, it would probably be a cell unto itself just because it's so big. And the crew requirement is so large. And then it would probably need support craft of its own, which one of the advantages of traveling in the carnival is you've got the uh, support crew built in because you're traveling in a fleet just kind of the idea. So one of the things they designed this ship around was the hangars it could fit into. So it's one class down from something like the Reclaimer. Um, the downside is it always tries to stuff you into these tiny little hangers that just barely fit it. So, uh, yeah, get get ready for that. That's that's good times. Yeah, uh, but here we go. We'll go ahead and we'll pull in um, again because of your sight lines here. It's very easy to land this thing, even if it can be a little hair raising sometimes. Oh, look at that. There's a dude loading out here. Uh, you know, um, nom, 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 nom. collision alerts all over the place and then when you pull up on this thing you got to get really uncomfortably close to the people inside that sort of bridge area sort of con tower so we're looking down start slowing down a little more just a little Right about there, the Funk Soul Brother. Ah! Hey gang, so you might notice that I am wearing different clothes now. That is because moving those ships, uh, along with running a few errands during the day, actually took an entire day. So what I am going to do from here on is uh, 
try to keep it to just the ships that I actually own and have a plan for. Um, like there's a good number of ships here uh, that are just loners. So what can happen sometimes with the loner matrix, which I'll uh, provide a link for here, is not only will you get a ship that's roughly equivalent. So, for example, if you have an Odyssey, you get a Carrick. But on top of the Carrick, you get a Reliant Core and a Nomad, uh, neither of which I own. So just to kind of speed things up a little bit, I might talk about some of those ships because I have owned them in the past. Um, but I'm not going to actually call them up and fly them and kind of do the walkthrough that I've been doing. Uh, just it's it's taking a long time and we're just on the anvil ships and there's a little ways to go. OK, so this is one that I think I actually own. I don't think I melted it. Uh, if I did, I will probably be buying it in game eventually just to replace it. Uh, I don't have the regular Hornet, and again, it's coming out damaged. Ah, oh, Orison, you're the worst. Why do you punch the hell out of my ships? Uh, this is the Super Hornet, and um, if you are going to get one of the Hornets, I have no idea why you would get the regular Hornet over the Super Hornet. Super Hornet has got the bigger guns up front, it's got a second seat that can control that turret up there. When it doesn't have a person in that second seat, that turret becomes pilot controlled. It's pretty nice. It's got two big guns on the wings. One of the reasons why I like the Super Hornet is, if I can get in, where is, use the pilot ladder. Oh, um, one of the reasons I like the Super Hornet is another one of those things in that rock, scissors, paper game. Medium ships uh, are kind of in the same deal as light and heavies. They sort of fall into that mix in the sense that um, they aren't as zippy as lights and they aren't as tough as heavies, but they're tougher than lights and punch harder than lights, but they're zippier than heavies. And so it's kind of it kind of falls into that medium class that shouldn't be overlooked. Um, this game will kind of come down to that sort of rock, scissors, paper gameplay. Again, this is not my daily flyer. This thing will probably sit on either a uh, on either a Kraken or a Liberator and provide close in support. But all in all, uh, the Super Hornets heyday kind of came at the same time as the Sabres heyday. It was in those days you had the Gladius, the Sabre, and the Hornet Super Hornet. Of those three, the Super Hornet was the tankiest. And that was not accidental, that this vehicle, once armor comes into the game, will be extremely tanky for a medium fighter. So kind of consider it to be an A-10, like you'll be able to blow off wings and the backs and all of that. Um, it'll carry a bunch of guns. Again, I would say, take the Super Hornet over the regular Hornet if you want to try it out. It's not the Meta Fighter right now. When armor drops in, uh, I don't think it'll ever be Meta, but the amount of guns this thing carries and missiles, um, I'm actually not seeing missiles on this. I'm pretty sure it has them. Hang on. Eight marksmen. So yeah, those are size ones. Let's see, what else do we have? It's just those eight marksmen. Let's see if that opened up a... Uh... There they are. Okay, yeah, so you can just see that it, it opened it right there. Let's close that up. All right, so those just drop down. Feels like there's something missing right there, doesn't it? I don't know what that is. Might be the module where the... Uh... I know there's one of these that can carry cargo, maybe? Maybe that'll be a bomb bay one day? 
No. Uh, I don't fly this one too often these days. Um, in the early days of this game, back in like 2016 or so, I used to fly this one a lot. Uh, I don't now. But all told, pretty fun uh, two-person fighter. If you just want something that's a little quicker than the big boys like the vanguards, uh, you can do worse. It it doesn't have a great reputation now, which is probably earned. Uh, people aren't really used to seeing it, which is kind of an advantage. So uh, you and a friend might actually have some luck with this guy if you pull it out. Um, fill it with energy weapons and stay out all day. And again, if uh, you don't have a friend, the advantage of this is this. That is a lot of firepower. That is a lot of firepower, especially if you set it up. Uh, I think every single one of these are gimbaled, um, which kind of makes up for its lack of maneuverability. And again, its maneuverability isn't terrible. It's not going to match with an arrow, but it's not terrible. So you could do worse than a Super Hornet, uh, especially once armor's in the game. And that is why a Super Hornet will probably end up in my hangar. Even if uh, I'm not the one flying it, it's just kind of a good Swiss Army knife, kind of a good jack of all trades fighter. So it's not the best at anything, but it's going to be good at a lot of them eventually would be my guess. So this one takes a little bit of explanation. This is the Anvil Gladiator, which is, I would call it a light bomber, but it's kind of a medium fighter. To call it a fighter is kind of a misnomer, even though it has two, I think size three guns. And then I think it's got two size four guns up on the upper turret. They might be size three too. I can't really remember. Uh, this thing actually carries uh, four size five torpedoes in this little bay right down here. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, this ship you will almost never see in the game, but it is a hell of a lot of fun to fly. Uh, one of the things I like about it is that you can, the entry, watch how fast this is. And I'm in. That is faster than just about any ship. And I love it. Um, let's go ahead and take off in this thing. This is kind of a crowded server. <laughs> Got a guy trying to board there. Oh, I'll bet that is Asa 99. Uh, he, he jumped on my last ship and I gave him a ride. Probably harmless, but I'm trying to record something. So sorry, dude. So my personal story with this one is that uh, one of the first ships I ever got in the game that I don't remember getting, I, I got it back in the Kickstarter. It's an Alpha Legacy account for the Light Speed. I think it's the Light Speed, whatever. It came with the 350R. Uh, and I never made an account back then. I didn't make an account, I think, until 2015 or 2016. And I forgot that I had this Legacy Alpha thing. So or this 350R, so I bought a uh, Mustang, quickly upgraded it after watching a guy called, oh man, what was his name? Tactical Advance. I don't even know if he still makes videos for Star Citizen or not, but he did a review of the Mustang Beta and I was like, oh, okay, that's the ship that I gotta have is the Mustang Beta. And this was the old version. Um, flew that around for a little while and then decided that uh, I wanted a fighter and I saw the gladiator and I was like, oh, that's the fighter that I want. It could carry these big ass missiles on it. Uh, yeah, it, uh, those those torpedoes aren't super effective. So anyway, this uh, this ship holds a special place in my heart as one of the first fighters I ever bought. Again, it's not meta. You are not going to be fighting anyone in an arrow and beating this thing. And honestly, that is not what the ship is designed for. This ship is designed to kill things freelancer sized 
or maybe up to constellation size with those four size five torpedoes right there. Uh, and I think what you will eventually be able to do is replace those four torpedoes with four bombs. So it'll be a ground effect vehicle. I have done a uh, Xeno threat in this before and uh, had somebody up and say, yeah, sure, I'll join you just because the Xeno threat was the only thing going on back in those days. And uh, they decided, yeah, what the hell? I'll, I'll jump in the turret thinking it was going to be something like a hurricane or something. And nope, it was the ship. And so uh, they ended up having a pretty good time in it. You aren't going to pour on the damage with your two size three guns, but it is a fun little ship to fly. So this is another one of those ships that its time hasn't really come in the verse. And I'm not sure its time ever really will come in the verse. It's kind of, um, it's going to have short range. So you could put it on a Liberator or a Kraken or something like that. And it'll be able to hit something like probably a Redeemer pretty hard. Those those torpedoes are not a joke. Size five torpedoes, it's not as nasty as what is what the Eclipse carries, certainly. Uh, but if they hit you, you're not going to be ignoring them. I'll put it that way. And since so few people actually pull the Gladiator, you kind of have an advantage because not many people know what to expect with it. It does fly decent. Um, you can sort of see its roll isn't horrible, its pitch and yaw, or its its pitch is pretty good. Um, it's pretty reactive. Uh, again, not going to be anything like a Gladius or an Arrow. You're not a dogfighter, you're a bomber. So that's kind of important, again, to remember these things rolls. But again, this thing is not meta. There are other ships that kind of do its style better than it. The Eclipse is a better bomber. Um, the Hurricane is a better, has a better turret on it. The Scorpius has a better turret on it. Uh, but it has a special place in my heart, so it's going to be in my hangar. And that is kind of the note that I wanted to end on this ship with, is just fly the ship that you want to fly. If you and a friend want to take out a Gladius, and you have a blast in it. This is a game. This isn't this isn't the Olympics. I mean, do what's fun. And that's just kind of my general thoughts on gaming in general. I mean, yeah, there are there are times that you want to win. You want to win the fight. You want to have the right tool for the job. But. I mean, never forget that you're also in this to have fun. And if you like a dumpy little ship like the Gladiator, then by all means, fly the Gladiator. And what fresh hell is this? Okay, um, let's get around this excellent parking job. So unlike the Gladiator, this is the Terrapin. I do have a guy who is kind of shadowing me in here. So I'm going to get on kind of quickly and talk about the ship from the outside. So unlike the Gladiator, the Terrapin has a little more utility, although it isn't in the game just yet. Uh, what the Terrapin's going to be doing is it's a low profile scout. As you can see, it's kind of a small dumpy ship. It is extremely heavy armored and you can sort of see those panels there. What will happen is those panels will close up and this thing can suck all of its heat in. Uh, so it is basically this quiet little hole in space. And so what I sort of see the Terrapin as being able to do is go out and keep an eye on the bad guys, whoever the bad guys may be and uh, just kind of tagging them for your group. I also think, and this isn't confirmed, 
that the terrapin so there you can sort of see the armored shell that comes down over the uh the front um this isn't confirmed but i think eventually with the new scanning they will have a combination of new types of scanners so if you have mining scanners you'll be able to mine for rocks if you have salvage scanners you'll be able to sal scan for salvage uh the kind of scanner that's on there right now that big dish on the top uh will be able to scan for ships and the like so this ship will be pretty good at both surveillance and recon people complain that it is not a great fighter and again a lot like the gladiator that's because it's not a fighter if you're using this thing to shoot down other ships you're probably hoping that they are very bad pilots because that is not what the ship is designed for it is designed to be a surveillance van so one of my hopes of this ship when it first dropped uh well actually this ship has been in the game for a while but i was hoping that the anvil carrick when they designed it would be able to fit the terrapin in it and then it would be like a force multiplier. Unfortunately, that ended up not being the case. Uh, they made the they made the hanger on the uh, on the Carrick specifically for the Pisces. So if you had anything Pisces size or smaller, that's what would that's what would fit in there and nothing else. Um, so a little disappointing there, but totally get it. Uh, but the Terrapin will definitely have a place in my fleet specifically for that surveillance capability. Um, even though it has two seats, it has the scanning seat right underneath the dish there. And it's got the pilot seat. Uh, there's only one bed. It does have a shoilet in it, which is kind of cool. Um, and a little kitchen. So there is a combination of things. This ship is kind of meant to go off on its own. So this ship probably won't come into its own until the new scanning gameplay is in. But when that does, uh, this ship should be niche, but a very important niche and one that shouldn't be overlooked in any fleet. There were some theories there'd be variants. And I think there's even talk and lore that there would be variants that would be drop ships or uh, even medical ships, which would make a lot of sense. Uh, more so than the Pisces rescue, uh, the Terrapin with its heavy armor would make a lot of sense as a combat medic evac. Now we can show you the back and my stowaway. There he is. So you can sort of see that he can rotate around in that chair, just totally gimmicky and kind of goofy, but still kind of cool not gonna fault it uh so you got room for four guns here a suit you've got your one bed and you've got your toilet right here all of your components are inside all in all pretty good ship um yeah if you're just kind of a solo guy and wants to be the recon guy for your org you could do worse than the terrapin uh, I know it's kind of a meme ship and kind of goofy right now, uh, but it will definitely have its place in the verse. It just hasn't arrived just yet. Uh, one last thing I'd say is just to keep its signature even lower, you're not going to be killing anyone with those two guns. Uh, either replace them with ballistics or pull them entirely because you're not going to be dogfighting anyone in that thing.